Hello, my name is Luke Miller, and here's my presentation on my research of the limology of Silver Lake. I would like to give my acknowledgments to Robin Hyde for supervising my research, the Great Salt Lake Institute for funding my research, Jake Tolman and Tyler Roberts for providing previous year's research, the U.S. Forest Service, Cottonwood Canyon Foundation, and Utah Water Watch for providing information and resources. Silver Lake, the lake that I researched, is a part of the Twin Peaks drainage system. This is a watershed, meaning it is a part of the land, which means that it is a landmass that directs water that humans then use for consumption. This particular watershed provides 30% of the drinking water to Salt Lake. Because Silver Lake is a part of this watershed, we want to make sure that Silver Lake stays healthy so it can continue to produce a healthy outflow of water. How we do this is that I picked several sites and locations of the lake you can see here, and I would go to the lake weekly with chemical probes or samples that then I would take home to a lab and analyze using microscopes and spectroscopy to analyze the clarity, aqueous, and chemical concentrations of the lake. Uh, lakes are fairly unique, meaning that Every lake will have different amounts of chemical concentrations, chlorophyll, temperatures, zooplankton, all of that that will the lake will rest at, that the lake will be most healthy. And so the best way for us to understand lake health is to do this research over years and years to understand how the lake changes year by year and to understand where the lake is most healthy as well. The reason that we care about lakes is because lakes are a critical part of the environment. Uh, lakes provide biodiversity and, an, a, and a habitat for many plants, animals, and other organisms. Lakes act as a strainer within a bowl, if you can imagine that, which means that lakes help to not only store water, but they help to filter and store nutrients. Um, which helps to keep the areas around the lake hydrated and also helps provide nutrients for plants and animals to enjoy. This also, lakes also help with flood pre prevention and also help us to also help to get uh, get a healthy outflow of water. Um, Another thing is that Silver Lake is a beautiful place and we also love our lakes and want to be able to enjoy them and see them. And the only way that we can do that is by keeping them healthy and maintaining them. The reason that these chemical tests are important is because they help us understand what may be going into the lake that may be hurting or helping the lake. And so something that we worry about is lakes becoming over fertilized from human contamination. And there are sev several sources of human contamination that can affect lakes. One of them is from fertilizers, which contain phosphorus and nitrogen in the forms of phosphate and nitrate. Phos uh, fertilizers used near a lake can over can leak into the lake, leak the nutrients into the lake, which can over fertilize the lake. Uh, the burning of the coal puts mercury into the air, which can absorb into the lake and get eaten by fish, which puts mercury in our fish. Um, excess sediments from construction, humans walking around or other sources fall into the lake and um, can over fertilize the lake. Emissions in general, put oil, grease, and floatables into the lake. And the reason that we're worried about all of this is because over fertilizing the lake can cause an algal bloom, which is a process known as eutrophication. And an algal bloom is when uh, the algae um, consume nutrients such as phosphorus and nitrogen. So when lakes get over fertilized, the algae then consume these nutrients and start to overproduce. And what this does is it reduces the clarity of the lake because there's so much algae 
It pushes out other organisms because they have to compete with the algae for nutrients. Um, many types of algae are toxic and the algae also deplete the oxygen in the lake because they consume the oxygen in the lake, making it so that it is not as breathable for fish. So some of the methods I used for the lake was one, I used sonar mapping for testing the depth of the lake. I used chlorophyll spectroscopy to determine the chlorophyll concentrations in the lake. The dissolved oxygen temperature and other chemical concentrations were monitored using chemical probes. A zooplankton net was used to monitor the zooplankton density in the lake. I worked with Utah Water Watch to set up E. coli testing in the lake, which essentially you take a sample of water from the lake and grow an E. coli culture and count the number of spots. The water speed of the lake was also monitored using a probe and the clarity of the lake was monitored using Secchi depths. Here are the, the results of the chlorophyll A testing uh, throughout the summer. And so chlorophyll can uh, vary greatly depending from day to day, depending on the amount of algae in that area, the amount of nutrients on that particular day. Um, but we can overall see the trends and the consistency of our uh, chlorophyll A concentrations. Here's the results of the mapping of the lake. And so here we can see the depths of Silver Lake, um, as well as, and this was taken June 6, 2020. The max depth of the lake was 4.2 meters. And the clarity of the lake was monitored using this Secchi depth disk here. Essentially what you do is you lower the disk into the lake and you record the depth at which you can no longer distinguish between the white and black parts on the disc. And the lake was actually so clear that the disc could be seen at the bottom of the lake, anywhere within the lake. Here are the results of our dissolved oxygen. Um, the dissolved oxygen was monitored at the surface, one meter and two meters deep. Um, and also at the deeper areas of the lake, we, it was, I monitored the dissolved oxygen at three meters deep. Um, and we can see we can see the dissolved oxygen was fairly consistent throughout the year. Um, and we also we also see here that surprisingly, um, the dissolved oxygen in certain areas can be a little bit lower, deep, a little bit higher, deeper in the lake. Um, but overall, it's fairly consistent at all depths. Here's the results of monitoring the temperature of a lake throughout the year. Um, the temperature, the lake was pretty cold. It was never the warmest it ever got was 20 degrees. And as we would expect, the temperature is colder, deeper in the water. Um, and here are some of the other results in the lake. Um, we monitored the calcium, the um, potassium, the chlorine, the ammonia, uh, the nitrate and the pH of the lake. And all of these results were fairly consistent. Um, and kind of were within these ranges um, and the water speed the lake has a very small water speed of 0 0.01 meters per second to 0.2 meters per second was the highest speed that we ever measured and this is also joe the moose which can frequently be seen at the lake and can even be seen swimming at the lake um, the results of our zooplankton is I averaged our zooplankton from month to month. Um, and we can see that as we got into the month of, months in the summer, the amount of zooplankton increased. Um, and from our E. coli testing, we used two milliliters of water and we found that on August, we found 43 E. coli spots. In September, we found 50 spots. So looking at these results, um, we can see that our chlorophyll production is fairly low. Um, it is kind of in the range of allotrophic to a mesotrophic lake. Um, and Silver Lake from previous years has been determined to be an allotrophic lake. And so this chlorophyll A concentration um, is, is good and is what we would expect. 
Um, and then from additional analysis, we compared our data to previous year's data. We found that the lake has a high dissolved oxygen. Um, it has very clear waters, very little bit of turbidity, uh, low production of zooplankton, uh, low nitrogen levels and fairly cold waters. And all of this analysis tells us that the lake is fairly healthy as it is right now. However, we will continue this research will continue to be done year after year, um, and we will continue to monitor these parameters to better understand how the lake is changing and also how we can keep it healthy. And here are some of my references used in which I got information. Thank you.